Welcome, my friends. I'm your host, Father Nelson Medina, and this is Your Catholic Faith Reloaded, episode number five. In former episodes, we have talked about truth, because faith is not about fantasy, it's not about illusion, it's not about imagination. That's not the main thing in faith. Faith is about truth. And if you like to have solid foundations, solid ground, and you like to be grounded, okay, so this is your space. You're most, most welcome. So we spoke about truth, and then we spoke about uh, what was the, the title? I, I liked very much that title. It was uh, God is not a microbe to be seen through your microscope. It's all about how, how do we come to know God? Uh, this is in technical jargon. This is called epistemology, epistemology, which is about how we come to know something. You have epistemology in science. For example, if you study physics, you need an epistemology. How do you build up knowledge in physics? How do you build up uh, knowledge in mathematics, in biology? Every realm of knowledge needs its own epistemology. So in technical terms, that's what we are doing right now. We are talking about how do we come to know God? And may I repeat myself uh, with this example? When you come to know a person, what's the most important thing? And it, most probably we would agree that it is the relationship. It is the relationship. In entering into a relationship with that person, that means listening to him or her, uh, also um, being with that person in different circumstances and um, looking at his reactions and his preferences or, or whatever is important for that person, even those moments that are uh, frustrating, uh, even those moments, or probably most those moments, tell, tell us a bit about that person. So it is relationship, the key to the knowledge of persons. Well, God is nothing less than a human person. In fact, he's infinitely more. So when we come to know God, we shouldn't expect to treat God as a microbe or as a molecule that you study in a lab. That's not the idea. You enter into a relationship with God. And that kind of relationship did not begin with ourselves. It's not our mind building up a set of concepts, a scaffolding, a complex scaffolding of concepts interrelated. No, that's not the main thing. That would be useful maybe in philosophy and philosophy uh, probably is done that way, but that's not the case with faith and religion. The initiative, the first step was taken by God himself. And that's what we were, examining in our last episode, we were talking about creation as the first language that God has used to communicate with us, to enter into relationship with us. Of course, that relationship does not exclude, I have to emphasize this very strongly, does not destroy your capacity for reasoning it is all the same as when you enter into relationship with a human person. The relationship is that will tell you what kind of person she or he is. Yes, but in that relationship, you don't put your reasoning capacity aside. You keep your reasoning capacity, you keep your reason, you keep your capacity, you keep, you, you keep your intelligence, your, your skills, 
to observe and to analyze, and you use all that in the relationship with this person. Well, it is the same with God. God has entered into relationship with us, for example, through creation, but creation and the revelation of God through creation does not illuminate, does not uh, uh, tells you to put aside your reasoning capacity and to forget who you are or who you are able to do. No, that's not God, at least. That's not the Christian God. That's not the God we believe. That's not our God. So on that basis, let's move a little forward. Uh, I know that we are moving at slow pace, and I simply hope that you find that um, slow pace, you find it comfortable for you. Uh, I hope it is, uh, it is comfortable for you. Okay, we continue with the resource that we are using. Uh, as I have said, almost in every episode, this is a catechism that was published by the Joan of Arc Catholic Parish in Indianapolis in the US. Most of the world's religions know something true about God, but they do not have the full truth. Wow, this is a strong proposition, a strong affirmation. They do not have the full truth. Why do we say so? The full knowledge of God can only be received from what God says of himself, and ultimately, we know God most fully through his son, Jesus Christ. As we were commenting just a minute ago, God has entered into a relationship with us. So if, if we are to know God, not to imagine God, not to put our thoughts as the reality of God, instead of the reality of God. If we are not to put our thoughts in place of what God is, we need to enter into that relationship and that's exactly what the revelation, revelation provides to us. Jesus is the full and complete revelation of God in truth. Again, the book of Hebrews, Chapter 1, verse 1 says, In ancient times, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways, but in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. We have a slightly different translation here. God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. So, there are more than one language we can say that God has used to communicate with us. But at the same time, the fullness of revelation, no doubt about this, has come to us through his son, through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ himself. Okay. This full revelation of God through Jesus Christ came about slowly over many centuries. You can count those centuries if you go from Abraham and the patriarchs and then the stay in Egypt and then the Exodus and then the arrival and the conquering of the promised land. And then the time of the kings and the prophets, and then the exile, and then the many centuries between the exile and the coming of Jesus Christ. So it's a clearly, it, it's a long journey. It's a long journey. This is, this is not a couple of sentences. This is not a couple of pages. This is the history of a pilgrim people, the pilgrim people of God. This is the journey of the people of God. The full revelation of God through Jesus Christ came about slowly over many centuries. Each time God revealed something 
about himself to a chosen person, he would establish a covenant, a promise with them. The covenant promises all looked ahead to God's final promise, Jesus. You can see the relationship, the connection between covenant and this word we have used many times also in this episode. The relationship, the relationship. God has entered into a relationship and you see the link between relationship and covenant. In some sense, a covenant is simply, simply said, a covenant is the formal, the formal aspect of a relationship. That's a covenant. For example, two people can be good friends. Even more, they fell in love with each other. That's great. That's beautiful. But then they, they want to build up a home. They would like to have children and to raise them. So this man and this woman entered into a covenant. And that covenant has a special name. It's called marriage. So they entered into marriage, which is the formal aspect of a relationship. We keep some particular names for some particular formal relationships. And this is the case with the marriage. But there are all the other relationships. For example, you have your, uh, your friends and you all dream of a big corporation and you enter into a formal relationship, for example, in terms of a contract. And that contract is stating what should everyone do in order to remain in the covenant and in order to, well, to fulfill, to reach the aims of that corporation you have dreamt of. It's exactly here. The covenant promises all looked ahead to God's final promise, who is Jesus. The final promise is Jesus Christ. And of course, there's also another promise, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Beginning with Noah, God began to speak to people, revealing more and more about himself through the ages. His mercy, his faithfulness, his power, his wisdom, all that came to be known in a long, long process because this was a long, long journey. And all that journey pointed to Jesus Christ, to the arrival of Jesus Christ. The collections of these special revelations of God have been collected into the Holy Scriptures or Bible. Well, some final questions uh, for this section. From where do we get our beliefs about God? List some ways besides the Bible in which God reveals himself. Even better, if you take this question and apply it to yourself, to your own life. Why does God reveal himself to us? I like this question. What is the fullest way in which God has made himself known to us? Well, these are questions uh, in order to, to deepen our knowledge of the revelation of God and also in order to, to reflect upon our own history of salvation, our own history of belief with God. My friends, thank you. Thank you for being here. And may I offer to you the blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you soon. God bless you.